fork. You needn't wait to come to a fork in the road. You're always at some fork or another. Some of the forks have so many tines, you would not recognize them as forks. But at every step, you make a decision, weighing certain considerations, failing even to consider others. There are advantages and disadvantages to each alternative you choose, and to every one you don't. There are multiple possibilities that are multiplying all the time, requiring infinite parallel universes to accommodate them all. Onward you choose, realizing some benefits and some consequences. Dismayed at how often you feel betrayed by your own decisions, finding at length that no matter what choices you make, you just can't please all of yourself all of the time. So many choices you have, and so many times you have no choice but to make a choice you don't want to make. If you really had your choice, you would choose not to choose, but you have to choose. And still, this is called free will. It's like so many things called free. But at least we are free to think of all that we might do. Just think. It is written, or at least it is said, that if you sin in your heart, that is to say, if you sin in your mind, your heart being too busy pumping the blood about to indulge in such diversions as sin, that thinking about doing something bad is as sinful as doing it. But if we are to feel as guilty for our evil thoughts as we are for our evil deeds, why then should we not get full credit for thinking about doing good deeds? Haven't we all done wonderful things in our hearts? That is to say, in our minds. Why, just yesterday, in the morning, I thought about solving world hunger. In the afternoon, I thought about curing cancer. In the evening, I thought about calling a friend. All of these things would have been good to do, and I did essentially do them all yesterday in my heart, that is to say, in my mind. As you can see, yesterday I had such thoughts that would make any man proud. And I haven't even told you yet about the sins.